I think that's also a really key piece of this conversation is knowing what success means to you. Because I think a lot of times our definition of success seems like, yes, oh my gosh. But a lot of times our definition of success comes from society around us, right? We, we pick up our definitions of success from our parents, from our teachers, from our colleagues, from our work environment, from all of these places other than ourselves. And so a lot of times we've subscribed to this idea of success that we don't actually believe in but we haven't given ourselves the chance to realize that we don't believe in it. And so when you start looking at possibility portals, looking at embodying this energy, looking at trying something new, it's so important to first take a step back and think to yourself, what does success mean to me? Is success having a certain number of students or reaching a financial goal or having the perfect house or whatever that is? Or is success to you trying something new, creating something that you wanted to create, being joyful in your own presence, standing in your authentic truth? And, and the thing about this is there's no right answer. There's no right or wrong. This is what success looks like. This is not. It's all about what it is to you. But we get trained to think that success has to look a certain way. And so then when we try something new, maybe it has that outcome of being successful according to the traditional definition of it. And maybe it doesn't, but it makes it so much worse when it doesn't because we think that that's the only way that someone can be successful. And so it just adds this additional layer of complexity to things. And so letting yourself take a step back from the get-go and saying, what does it mean to me can give yourself that additional layer of permission to try something. Because if success to you is no longer making six figures in a single year, but success to you is having an idea and having the courage to do the thing anyway, then just trying something new, you will be successful regardless of the outcome because you did something, you tried it, you had that courage. And so noticing what the shift is and also giving yourself permission for success to be whatever it is for you, whether it's one side of the spectrum or right in the middle or the other, it doesn't matter. But when you're clear on it for you, it can help you align your priorities as you move forward and begin to draw that energy into your life. Right. And we have such this fear of failure in our society and failure is one of those things, just like success, it has the stigma to it. And our culture, our parents, all of everyone around us has given us this term failure and what it is, is like, actually, what if I want to challenge you, like every day we should fail at something. Why? Because if we're failing at something, that means we tried. It means we tried something and now we're going to learn from it and we're going to shift and we're going to keep moving forward. And if so if we're striving to fail in a way of learning, adjusting and, and moving forward, and we, we lose the fear of failure. And this also goes back to something I say all the time too. It's like done is better than perfect, right? Like there are so many people holding on to perfection or they're holding on to that fear of what success and failure mean to them based upon culture and society rather than what's true for them internally that we get held in place. We get tied down. We get stuck in that fear rather than exploring. So when we can get to a place of curiosity, when we can get to a place of exploring, when we can get to like, let's see how this goes and try it, then we don't feel bad if we only have three people sign up for our workshop. We don't feel bad, like why? Because it, you're coming in with an energy of like, huh, now I know what worked, what didn't work. I know how to adjust and move forward based off of what happened during this round. So we keep trying, we keep, and you know, you see that time and time again at Reiki Cafe University, when we first started offering longer signature programs, it was, it was like a seven month program. And we were like, you know what, this, this is fantastic. And I love it. And it could be better. And so we try again and we do it again. And every time we go, wow, this is really awesome. And yet, what if we tweak this? What if we shift it over here? What if we make it like this? And it just gets getting better and better and better every time because we're not allowing us to hold on to the fear that it has to look a certain way. Or if I did it once, I have to do it that way every time again. We have flexibility to say yes to the possibility that we can shift and we can be flexible with divine spirit because divine is always kind of in this flow. And if we can get in that flow too, 
we're going to get those hits. We're going to get like, try it this way. But when we're in the rigidity of like, it has to look like this and it has to look like that person's offering. I have to copy their copy from their website. I have to take their same words. You know, it's like, no, 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 <laughs> you can't, you can't do it like that. That's not the best way forward. Yeah. And I think it, it goes back to what we were talking about too, with success, because just like sometimes we have to redefine what success means. I think it's equally important to redefine what failure means because a lot of times what happens is, you know, it starts when we're in school because we're graded on our work and you can quite literally fail a test in school and it becomes like the end all be all of your education. Do you fail this class or do you pass? And so we take this institution that we've grown up in, whether you go all the way through college or you stop somewhere before, there are several years in our lives where we are taught that good work is an A bad work is an F or a failure. And so we're taught that failing is bad. And we're also taught that failing is an end all be all. It's the end of the line. And so we take this training that we've had during school and then we start to apply it to our life, right? And we start to feel like we're being graded on how we live, what we do, how we work. And a lot of times this also comes from traditional religious perspectives too, of like, are you stacking up your points? in the good column versus the bad column. And we take this idea forward that we're being graded. When, when you think about it, the idea of failure that we're given in school is that if you don't do good enough, you will fail and you will have to do it again or you will have to drop out of the class. So it's, it's this end where something happens, you're failed and you're done. But when you think about this in life, Failure doesn't happen that way. It's not like you fail at something and then your life ends. That's not how it works. You fail at something and you try something different. Something happens where even if, you know, let's say that you work at a corporate company and you make a decision that loses the company millions of dollars, you could say that's a failure, but the company doesn't end. You make a decision to patch the hole, to fix the thing, to move on. And so that flow keeps moving forward and that always happens in life. So if you're defining failure as something not working, as it being the end of an idea, like it was defined in school, then technically failure doesn't exist because you're not done ever. If you look at it from a spiritual perspective, but on a physical level, you're not done until you die. There is no failure here if you're defining it that way. And so thinking about how do I define failure? Is it making a mistake? Is it not having anyone sign up? Is it whatever it is? And then getting curious about why is that my definition? Is that the definition that I want to have? Does that definition even make logical sense? Because I think it's something that we don't think about a lot. Like we hear about failure all the time and we're all afraid of failure, but very rarely do we sit down and think what actually is failure? And a lot of times, if we think about that, the argument starts to dissolve because there's no substance there. It's this idea that we've all built up and built up and built up and are afraid of, but the thing that we're afraid of doesn't really exist if we start to feel into it and look at it. And so as you are defining success, also looking at what does failure mean? Because that will also give you the freedom to realize it's going to be okay. You're not going to die. You're not going to get hurt. You're not going to end up homeless. Whatever the fear is in your mind, you're going to be okay. And it's okay to try, even if what happens is your mind's definition of failure, because now you know that failure doesn't actually exist. It's just an invitation to redirect and redirect and redirect and reevaluate and do it better next time. That's all it is, is it's an invitation to learn and to try something new and to do better and better and better and better, because that's what we're here to do is evolve and grow. And when we get to that place of curiosity, and exploration and giving things a try without the heaviness of these words, success and failure, we start dissolving limiting beliefs. And that subconscious, you know, negative thought process in the back can go, Shh, we're just, we're just getting curious here. It's a lot easier to start playing in this, in the, the space of seeing what's available and seeing what's going to show up for me when we can start letting some of those thoughts go we can recognize, wow, where did I get that little voice in the back of my head? Oh, 
maybe it's that person I follow who's not the greatest possibility portal, and yet I hear their messages all day long. You know, looking through our our Facebook feed, our Instagram feed, our YouTube watching, whoever we're following and going, is the message allowing me to see this as a possibility portal? Or is this actually holding me down and living in a state of fear? And going, maybe it's time to hit unsubscribe to some things. And maybe it's time because algos are like real. If you are <laughs> like, I think that if your algorithm is set up, it's a reflection of your energy. Right. So if you get sunshine every time you hit Facebook or YouTube, it's because that's where your energy is at. And so it's kind of like this is a really great opportunity to see the social media platforms in a different light. What is being reflected of you is where your energy is at. And something needs to adjust if it's not beautiful. Like I don't have heaviness on my Facebook feed. I can go scroll and go, look at all these wonderful people in my life. There's not, there's no heaviness there. And it's because the algorithm is matching my energy. Right.